So just a small recap. Um, I own the Zeker 7X now for I think four days and this is my first longer drive with it through the Netherlands. I'm having some, uh, some, uh, some appointments, some meetings with some customers. But a little bit of a, of a first impression of my, my first, let's say, 80 kilometers in the traffic in the morning. Um, I'm coming from a little bit of an history. I'm coming from a Skoda Enyaq 80X. Um, that car was having almost all options. I think it had all options. So also the automatic or the, the lane departure control, um, distance control. Everything was uh, was included in it, and I drove a lot with it. <clears throat> in this case, it's um, I'm after a little bit. I've, I have to 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 learn how this car is. One of the things that I experience right now is that when I'm driving at fully automatic, um, maybe you can see it at the steering wheel. If the track is a little bit wider with the with the both stripes on both ends. You can see the car is, is searching. It's searching a little bit where, where it should be in the middle. So for my opinion, it's too active in finding its, its, its middle point on the road. You can also see it over here that the steering wheel is continuously yeah, moving. I think that's one of the causes possibly why people are complaining that uh, the car isn't driving that stable or it is stable, but it feels it feels awkward when you're driving a lot in this way. <clears throat> uh, another thing, so now it deactivated the controls control. Don't know why. Maybe because I'm too slow. <clears throat> also looking at the navigation system. This is the. The, the, the new Zeker system that is in one of the apps. Um, haven't found how it works. The one that's on board, directly on board, is executed. Yeah, I, I don't think it may, maybe it got it, but already more people are, are saying that it's not yeah, finding all traffic jams and whatever. Um, so I stopped with that one. I'm now using the Zeker. I don't know how they call it, it's the version 2, I guess. <clears throat> but in any case, that thing, uh, that application is showing you all traffic traffic jams that are right now, so I'm, I'm assuming they're getting that from, getting that from, from the information online. Activating the cruise control again. Um, yes, getting used to it. Consumption at the moment at four degrees. It's like the average is 21 kilowatts per hour per 100 kilometers. So I guess that's reasonable for this big car. But I will do a, sh a little bit of an of an of a recap at the end of uh, of my trip today. So looking at my agenda, I have to do a total of like f I think 400 and something kilometers. So I have to charge somewhere on the way back home. I'm going to show that also what the speeds will be um, at this temperature. So yeah, quite quite interested in what's happening and get back to you later. So a few minutes further down the road, I'm almost at my end destination, going to have to do another 25 kilometers, so 22 minutes, it's a little bit of a traffic jam right now. Um, yeah, still still improving the, the average use of electric electricity, so now I'm down to 20.1 kilowatts per hour with 100 kilometers. Um, yeah, deactivated on a few moments the lane departure. It's uh, it's kind of kind of annoying. Have it activated. Um, little thing that that I experience is that uh, the steering also when you 
deactivate the lane departure, active lane, lane following, how you want to call it. Um, it, it it's, it's steering a little bit heavy around the middle point, so you're, you, you have to put a little bit more force. Would be great if that could be reduced. The car is not wobbly or whatever, I think that's the idea of why they put it like that, that you, that you increase or uh, decrease the... Oh, so. so as you can see it over here, I deactivated the, the active cruise control and it, 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 it feels like it's a little bit sticky around the middle, the, the steering wheel. So uh, you'll, you're putting some force and then suddenly the car is moving. Um, going back to the right lane right now. So and then when you... It's, it, it, it's like the force... Oh, traffic control. It's like uh, when you're moving from lane to lane, then it's it's deactivated because then you're using the indicators to to move to the other lane, and then it feels like easy steering or lighter around the middle. And now that you're back in the lane, it's it's like the car is always trying to keep the lane. You can also see it now uh, because I'm now slightly going in the direction of the line. So it's not compensating right now. It sees that it's going across the line, that's good. But it feels, it feels heavy. And that's what I have right now. You can see I can move the steering wheel, but you feel that the car is keeping the wheel straight, that it wants to go on. And if you have to push it through to move the car, it's always creating a little bit of extra. So there is a certain, I think it's a little bit, uh, it's a software thing that it's, it's, it, it tries to keep the steer, the wheel straight. And when you're trying to move the wheel, it's like, it's like an elastic band that you're moving it and suddenly the wheels are going. That's a little bit the feel I have right now. But okay, um, all in all, I think everything went quite well. Um, just mention also the 20.2 right now. I've done 151 kilometers and with an average of 20.2 with 7 degrees. I drove off this morning at, uh, at 6 degrees, so it's quite a low temperature. Um, I started at 100%. Don't know anymore how many kilometers that was, but I think it was 400. I men they mentioned over there, it mentioned it. So it's. Um, uh, for my opinion, I don't have to complain with the weight of this car and also how many power it's got. It, uh, it can drive, for my opinion, it can really drive economical. Yeah. Putting it back on cruise control. As you maybe can see, I, I, I will try to zoom in when I'm uh, when I'm putting the, the movie together. That you see the movement. I'm just keeping. I'm holding the steering wheel so that it detects that I'm holding it. And what you can see is that it is continuously trying to compensate. So that's not a movement what I'm doing, that's the cards doing. So you see those small movements. Going to my next meeting. Still have to do another 30 kilometers. Um, our rifle will be at 36%. Average use is 20.4 kilowatts hour. And I already drove today 255 kilometers. So, in my opinion, a quite good reference uh, what the consumption is on this car. 
Um, thing of course is, is that in the Netherlands you're on a, during daytime you're not allowed to drive any faster than 100 kilometers per hour so um, that's also I think the reason why the consumption is in a very nice low thing um, yeah well, well we'll show that to you in a, in, a, in the next movie because in two weeks I have to go to the south of Germany and then we're going to do some uh, Autobahn so German highway uh, kilometers and then we will see what the consumption will be when you're on driving around 130 140 kilometers an hour in any case today I have to get a charger so before I get home because um, I have to do another I guess 200 kilometers to get home um, so we'll also show you uh, on what speeds we're gonna charge depending on, on of course I think I will push the button or find the button where we can um, preheat the battery I don't know if it works or if it makes any sense but going to find out and if that makes uh, if that's gonna work so all in all I hope this gives a little bit of an impression what the car does I'm going to film a little bit longer also to give you an idea on because now I'm driving again on fully automatic uh, also lane departure is uh, uh, or uh, active lane assist is activated driving on cruise control right now and the funny thing is uh, the steering wheel is still moving slightly so the feeling is, is that it's it's searching for the middle of the road but all in all it's very comfortable drive um, of course when a car is new, you also have to get used to the yeah the small details what a car can do. But in any case, I'm still very positive on this one. So when I started to um, put the home destination in the navigation system, uh, the battery started to preheat itself or to condition precondition itself. That was also one of the, the, the mentionings on the screen. Um, funny thing is, um, when I came at the charging station, uh, it was a 300 kilowatt. And the nice thing is, is when you plug it in, it almost started on 300 kilowatts. Um, so that was very positive, what you could also see in the, the, the picture right uh, a few moments ago. So firstly to clarify the 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 steer on the tight 28 minutes what you see in the top um, I put the battery limit on 100% so standing at the fast charger it will even mention that yeah it will take a long time to get 100 so normally when you're fast charging of course you go until 80% and then that time uh, what's mentioned above the car is a lot shorter. So after leaving the charging station, I didn't uh, put uh, the camera back on. Uh, it was already uh, yeah, going into the evening dark. So a little summary of the Seeker 7X first driving experience of mine for 480 kilometers this day. Um, great car, uh, drives good. Small details that need to be fine tuned, but it can also be a little bit of a learning curve for mine end. If you like what I do, then uh, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. And if you uh, mention a few things in the comments or what you would like to see, then I can try and do my best to put it into the next movie. Thank you very much and hopefully see you on the next one.